welcome in everybody. Um, this is my slightly better than casual playthrough explanation of how you can quickly beat Elden Ring. Um, even as a even as a casual player, you can master Elden Ring pretty quickly. Going through all of, all of my personal choices as I'm going through the uh, the setup process. The first thing that I do is uh, I choose the samurai class. Um, Starts with a weapon that has a bleed effect. Uh, starts with a ranged weapon. Starts with a good balance of vigor, endurance, strength, and dexterity, which are the main stats that we're going to be focusing on. Specifically, strength. But um, it you have a good balance of all of the physical stats that make your character really strong in this game. Uh, we aren't going to be using any spells, so intelligence, faith, and arcane being nine, eight, eight is perfectly fine for us. Um, and uh, yeah, you just get you just get a good all around um, setup. Now, for the purposes of me going fast, um, you can really choose any of the starting starting items. However, if you're looking for something that is going to be a little bit more casual playthrough friendly, I might go with the Golden Seed, which lets you get more healing potions um, earlier. If you want to use Spirit Ashes, the Fang Dimped Ashes are pretty good for you to start with. Uh, crackpot's also pretty good uh, if you plan on using consumables uh, or using firebombs and stuff like that. Pretty pretty good. Um, however, I'm going to start with the Lands Between rune. And the reason I'm going to start with that is because it's going to be used very, very early in the run to purchase some items uh, from the first vendor that you encounter. Uh, and we're never going to come back to see him. So uh, that's why I'm going to choose the Lands Between rune. However, I, I might suggest something different if uh, you know if that suits your fancy so we're just going to load on in and, and start her up um the beginning of this is pretty straightforward um we're gonna go pick up some items and kill ourselves <laughs> which i guess is uh i guess is a little morbid but we're pretty much going to skip this intro. We're going to run over here. We have to grab this item in order to access this door. And if we were doing like the full speed run route, we'd like quit out um, at all of the doorways and stuff like that. But we're not going to mess around with quitting out. Uh, I don't really care about my HP or anything like that because we're just going to run through this area pretty fast. And uh, honestly, we're probably going to uh, unequip all of our items because um, while the, the armor and stuff is pretty good, uh, we're not going to make use of the bow, um, and it's going to be a hot minute before we make use of the shield. So, um, just go ahead and skip this grafted scion fight because he's going to kill you anyway. So you might as well just, you know, save yourself the time, right? All right. So obviously, as soon as we get here, we get our flasks. Uh, we're going to make our way through this door here. I'm going to go ahead and unequip these items because they aren't going to be useful to us in the immediacy. And for the most part, I'm going to be um, wielding my weapon two-handed. I'm going to go ahead and pop this consumable rune. Remove that from the bar. Go ahead and get my items set up a little bit better. Um, I usually put my my blue pot on my uh, on my quick access belt here. Get myself kind of set up here. So the first thing that we need to do um, on our little run through here is we're going to make a pit stop over at this nice church here, and the church is going to have uh, a couple things for us. One, it's going to have a smithing stone, uh, which we are going to use to upgrade our sword, and uh, it's going to have uh, it's going to have a crafting kit and some pots that we can purchase. And that's the whole reason that we uh, start with that, that rune is so that we have enough runes to afford all of that stuff um, so that I don't have to come back for any of this. So purchase, uh, we want the cracked pots, we want the crafting kit, and we really don't care about anything else. Um, you probably could purchase a torch because the torch is kind of helpful. Uh, but we really don't need any of these recipes. The only recipe that we particularly care about during this uh, this setup is we want the sleeping potion. Uh, the sleeping potion is very, very powerful for certain boss fights. And so we want to make sure that we get that. 
So not much interesting stuff is happening right here. We're just pretty much running to the grace um, that you get torn at. And that's, that's really the first checkpoint is getting our mount. So the beginning of this run actually has quite a bit of setup. Um, some of it, I will outline some extra stuff you can do if you want to be a little bit stronger than what you would normally be. Uh, but some things have kind of an interesting push and pull to them. Um, some things like um, how strong you are in this beginning section actually makes it difficult to perform some stuff later on. So I'll kind of go over that as well. But we don't really need her to do anything, and we just want to equip um, equip our horse. So I like to put uh, I like to put the horse in the quick access bar so that I can just essentially go Y and up on my D-pad um, to equip my horse. It's pretty simple and quick. Um, utilizing this pouch section here uh, is really really helpful. Uh, for items and stuff that you want to have access to, but you don't use constantly. Um, I'm very hesitant to use the slots over there uh, on the actual item bar um, for things because I, um, I really don't like not having access to my heal. Um, so we're going to take this little path and jump up here. This is kind of optional. Um, but it makes for, uh, makes for a very good way to acquire um, easy upgrade materials. You just kind of need to distract or get the attention of one of these giants. It doesn't really matter which one, but you need one of them to come over here and punch this statue. Um, thankfully, we've gotten that one. You know, it really doesn't matter which one you get. You just pretty much want to want to piss one off and get them to come over here so that they can break this little statue for you. And really, if their body comes into contact with the statue at all, it will break. So, so, yep, you just want to make sure you don't get caught. Stay heal up. And once you grab that, you can head up over these rocks to the north. And we can make our way towards... We can make our way towards more upgrade material. So. We're not even going to grab this grace here. We're going to run right past this shack. And we're going to sort of hang west as soon as we get to this shack. And in the distance here, you're going to see a few different things. So as we kind of crest over this hill here, you're going to see on the left here, there's going to be a dude in, dude in a chair. This has a bunch of uh, early upgrade material, uh, smithing stone ones, uh, three smithing stone ones, in fact. And then this right here is just a quick and easy golden seed. Now, as you run up this, this area here, uh, you're going to be accosted by a bunch of bulls, but we're just going to ignore them. We're going to jump up here, hop off our horse, and grab this grace. And you don't have to rest at this grace if you don't want to. You can just hop back on your horse and keep running. And our next goal is heading directly on over to this uh, giant right here. So we're not actually uh, looking to fight the giant specifically. We're actually looking to uh, run right past the giant and our goal is this item right here actually. It is a item that combines with our flask that we're going to get later to give us uh, some strength. Now we're hopping down here being careful not to fall and our next objective is uh, actually just right over here almost directly in a straight line. In fact um, our goal here is we are looking for um, we are looking for the ash of war for the gold, golden order golden order it'll show right here in a minute but we're gonna come over here this uh, this weapon has some pretty awesome uh, stagger potential with its uh, special we just hit this guy a few times with our, our special unsheathed on this weapon and he dry, uh, he drops the ash of war golden order. Now, Ash of War Golden Vow is a powerful uh, Ash of War because it gives you a stat buff that you can just utilize. We can jump off of that ledge directly onto here without taking any falling damage. Now we can hop off of here without taking any falling damage. Uh, this is optional, but I really like to grab it. It's an Exalted Flesh. We won't use that for a long time, but uh, grabbing that Exalted Flesh gives us some... Um, gives us some extra damage for much, much later in the run if we... Uh, if we so choose to use it. 
Um, you can go up on that ridge up there, and as you can hear him kind of saying hello, uh, you can go and hit up Alexander, who's up on that ri ridge right there, and get another Exalted Flesh. Or if you want to kill him, he actually drops a pretty sweet Talisman as well. We're going to grab these upgrade materials here. And we're going to round out our upgrade materials by purchasing some from this n nice fellow. So we're actually going to purchase two, uh, a couple things. One, we're going to purchase one smithing stone one. I like purchasing this crack pot. And then we're going to grab this short sword. So the reason that we grab the short sword is it is a slightly uh, less weight intensive weapon that we can just put an Ash of War on and utilize. It doesn't have to be our primary weapon. It's just kind of a, a weapon that we're gonna utilize to abuse the ability of an Ash of War. Because if you, if you want, you can have as many Ashes of War as you want. Um, just however many weapons you have equipped. Now right here, there are a couple Trina's Lilies. Why are these guys important? Well, it's important because Trina's Lilies are a material component for the sleeping potions that we have access to. Uh, now, right here is an interesting predicament because we can actually drop off of the ledge here and we should survive. Taking a little bit of damage, of course. But we can fall off of this ledge too. Hopefully this doesn't kill us. It does not. And conveniently speaking, right here on in this graveyard, there's a bunch of uh, runes that you can pick up if you want, although they aren't really necessary. But this right here is your important part. This is a Fervor's Cookbook. And the Fervor's Cookbook has the recipe for the Sleeping Potion. I'm going to go ahead and grab these runes just in case. Uh, the only one that's, like, really, really a good one is the is the Golden Rune 6. But um, the rest of them are fine. So we're going to go ahead and heal. We're going to go right over here. There's another place where you can hop down using these kind of gravestones as, as, uh, as a mechanism to make sure you don't get... Don't, don't take any falling damage. And we're going to make our way right to the, the Third Church America. I think that's what it's called, Third Church America. All right. So why are we taking a pit stop here? Well, there's two items here that we want. We want this Sacred Tear, which helps our healing. And we want this Crimson Crystal Tear. Now, we are going to take this Grace here, not because we're going to sit at it right now, but because we're going to make use of it later to warp back to. So we're going to head towards this Erd tree. Um, and that's because the Erd tree here has um, another flask item that we are going to make use of uh, in this build. Uh, we're going to be focusing on a two-handed strength build utilizing the Serpent Spear from the Rykard boss fight. Now you might ask, why would we utilize something like that? And how do we get something that is that far into the game this early. Well, I'll, I'll show you as we go through. Um, there are uh, a lot of ways to get around in Elden Ring that are not not really traditional. Um, and we're going to we're going to take advantage of some of those uh, in this run here. So as soon as we make our way um, out, uh, and grab grab those uh, those tiers, we're going to make our way into this ruins here. Now, Mistwood runes are good for a couple different reasons. The first reason is there is a Saber or a Smithing Stone 2 here, which you can utilize to upgrade your weapon. Uh, it's not super, super necessary, but the, the second thing here is there's a bunch of Trina's lilies that are surrounding this big old bear. And the last thing, which is kind of the most important thing here, is inside here is a very powerful uh, talisman. This is the Axe Talisman. The Axe Talisman gives you um, enhanced damage on um, two-handed two -handed charge attacks. Now we're going to kind of make our way around here so that we can mount without getting attacked by this bear. And we're going to try to make our escape from this bear. Now you... You might see some mushrooms on the map. I'm trying to pick up as many mushrooms as possible because mushrooms are the other component that is required in order to make sleeping potions. You need Trina's lilies and you need mushrooms. So you can come over and grab that little, um, that warp point there. I'm not gonna go ahead and grab that warp point, uh, but there is, a, uh, there is some advantages to grabbing that warp point there. 
Um, if you decide that you want to do other other things, especially in the area, it's not nifty to have that warp point because it puts you very close to where um, the Radon fight kind of puts you, or the Radon fight uh, unlocking the underground there. Um, I tried to make the jump that was over here, but I missed it, so I'm just gonna just gonna run into here. Now, Fort Height. Uh, this is an important location because Fort Height is the uh, area where you get one of the Dectus, uh, Dectus keys, the Dectus lift keys. Uh, and you pretty much are just running past all these enemies. You're going to climb up this ladder. You really don't care about fighting any of them. Though if you want to, you can. There's some pretty cool things like the uh, big knight in here drops a nice Ash of War that facilitates a bleed build um, very strongly. And here is the key that we were looking for. Dectus medallion. So now we're going to teleport back to that Third Church America, like I said. So now that we're back at the Third Church America, we're going to hop through this and we're going to head north. And there's going to be a little, um, like, point, like a jump point over here. One of the, one of the like, lift points here. And we're going to ascend this uh, cliff face here by making some tactical jumps. We're going to jump up here. And there is, and we're gonna kind of uh, jump up the corner here. We want to make sure that we grab this one Trina's Lily that's here as well. A few people tell me that. And good, how's you? I'm doing great. I'm uh, I'm going through and trying to trying to explain my thought process and what I do here for um, not necessarily like speed runs, but just like how I go about beating Elden Ring fairly quickly. So, you know, enjoy. If you have any questions, this is the perfect time to kind of let loose if you want to know something. So we're going to uh, take a dip into Kalid here. It's one of the first areas that you're going to run into in Kalid. And uh, we're just going to sit here on this grace. I like to uh, grab this grace just for safety purposes because this area right here can be particularly deadly. And we're going to go down here and you'll see these big old birds. We're going to try and avoid these big old birds. We're gonna make our way down this way. Asher, I will give you your your uh, your coins in just a minute. So we're gonna make our way down here, trying to avoid taking any damage. Uh, but we want to make sure that we grab these Trina lilies. As long as we keep moving. Oh my God. See, that's why we grabbed the grace. Exactly why we grabbed the grace because these guys suck. So it is pretty important that you kind of have an idea of what you're trying to do in an area before you attempt to do it because just just kind of floundering around in an area can definitely cost you. And a lot of times you're skipping enemies that you don't want to fight anyways. So we're jumping down here. We're kind of walking around. I don't need these rooms. All right. Ow! Ass. All right. So... So anyways, there is a couple Trina's lilies here that I like to grab, but there's a bunch of birds too, so kind of balance that out. Uh, you don't necessarily have to get these Trina's lilies. There are other Trina's lilies that you can get, but these just happen to be on the path, and they're usually pretty easy and not very difficult to pick up, though these birds are being per particularly aggressive today. So we're making our way east. We're pretty much moving in the direction of that giant tower because um, it, it's interesting that they, they put a starting area very close by to an end game area which i guess the i guess kaylid isn't necessarily end game uh but it's certainly like close to the end of mid game uh if we're talking about elden ring you know as a whole and um so it has some areas in it that have end game very powerful upgrade material so we're gonna kind of abuse the fact that there's some very easy to get upgrade items here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that. Um, and we're gonna make our way over here so that we can uh, we can get some of the somber upgrade stones that we need for our um, final weapon that we use. So this guy right here, a lot of people will chase him off the edge and knock him off the edge. Um, I don't know why I did that. But you have to be careful with this guy because uh, 
he will kind of like just run in the direction that you're not going. So you. Okay, perfect. So he explodes. Uh, so that thing explodes when it dies. So you want to make sure that when you kill it, you're not near it. So we're going to go and do a little bit of parkour. We're going to run down this tree branch here that's along the edge of this uh, tower. You're going to want to make sure that you are careful. You don't want to don't want to accidentally fall off a ledge here. But our goal is to get to the bottom, just, you know, alive. And right here, you're going to find is a somber smithing stone 9. So we have a somber 8 and a somber 9. Uh, along with some other things, a dragon grease and a rune arc and some other things. All of those things are pretty useful. Uh, but that somber 9 is really going to come into play in just a little bit. So we're going to make our way kind of like southeast-ish. Um, down deeper into the dragon borrow. And we're going to go through... Uh, we're going to go past an optional boss. I'm not going to kill it this time. Uh, I usually kill it when I do like my four funsies playthroughs. But... Um, we're going to run past a bunch of dragons. So there's this big old dragon right here. Um, he's just kind of sitting around and not doing a whole lot. We're going to run past him. Um, you can kill him very easily. Um, it just takes a little bit of time with your, uh, with your katana. Because um, while you don't do a lot of damage to him, you can kind of just sit over here on the tail. Hit him a couple times with your R1 attack with your katana. And uh, it will cause him to bleed, and by a couple times, I mean it's going to take like 30 some odd hits or something like that uh, to, to kill this guy, or to, to cause one bleed effect with your katana. Uh, but bleed does percentage max HP damage, so eventually you'll kill him, and he's worth, you know, 70, 80,000 runes or something like that, which will give you a pretty good kickstart to starting the game. So we're going to make our way through here. It's very important to kind of like run as fast as possible, get to this as fast as possible because they spit a bunch of poison down there, as you can see. And if you don't get ahead of the poison, you'll eventually get poison, which is bad. Um, now, in the speedrun route, you, uh, it does it does have you kind of come and grab this, or at least the old speedrun route that I used to do. This is the other half of that deck, this medallion. Uh, but we're going to also go ahead and grab a pretty awesome talisman that's over here, which is... Kind of a late game-ish talisman. You're not really supposed to come over here till later, but you can go pick it up early, and it's very, very strong. Um, so we're gonna kind of go around here. We're gonna press this. You don't have to. You can just kind of jump over to this side, and we're gonna go ahead and fall down into this pit here. As soon as we get into this pit, we're gonna grab this, and then uh, we're gonna quit out. And the reason that we quit out is by quitting out, we reset the positions and the aggro of all the enemies that are around us. It's a pretty common tactic in a lot of Souls games that if you're surrounded or in an awkward spot, you can quit out of the game, reload it, and all the enemies will be in their original position. So if you're being chased by a bunch of things, you can uh, you can quit out and it causes them all to reset their aggro. Now, another thing that I'll let you do specifically in Elden Ring is you can't teleport while you have aggro on you, but you can teleport if there's no aggro on you. So by clearing the aggro, we make it so that we can just teleport back to something else, you know, to teleport to a different location. So we're going to make our way back to Stormhill Shack. We're going to teleport back there, which we picked up this grace much earlier in the run. So why are we teleporting here? Well, normally a lot of people would go and fight like Mar Margit. Um, go ahead and equip this sword seal because it's a very strong item. It gives us a lot of HP and strength and, and other various stats that are very important. Um, we're going to go ahead and make our way up this road. Like we're going towards Margit, Mar Morgoth's uh, clone here. But we're not going to go kill this boss yet. We're not... We're not ready. We're going to make our way kind of underneath of this bridge underneath here. We're going to grab a couple mushrooms that we pick up, but we're going to make our way up and around the wall here and on the outside of the castle. Um, there should be some more mushrooms that we can grab. Here they are. All right. So um, there is a... There is a faster route to get around here, but I'm going to show you the consistent one. So some people some people that are amazing at this game can jump from this area over to that little rocky area right there. And uh, that will get you around the castle without having to fight that uh, first arduous boss. 
However, um, despite this bridge looking like it is collapsed and broken, uh, it might not cross all the way across, but we can utilize this bridge going down here um, to, to cross into a different section. So we're gonna essentially go the, the long way around this little gap. And this is, this is where you would jump from over there to over here. Um, much safer, you don't have to worry about dying. But very positive. So we're going to make our way around here. Just kind of following the side of this mountain as much as you possibly can. Uh, we're past some wolves and some other things. But we're going to be making our way to a warp point. Uh, we're going to do some fancy parkour down the side of a ledge. Uh, make our way to to some ruins. And, uh, and, uh, and grab some mushrooms along the way. I think that's the only thing that we really grab over here that's important. And you don't have to fight any of these enemies. You can just run past them all. So once you get past that grouping of wolves there, uh, you can kind of look along the edge of the cliff here and you're looking for these uh, like gravestones jutting out. And we're going to make use of them all in a parkour fashion. We're going to drop down here. And we're going to drop over here. And then that should be enough for you to drop down here and not die. So once we get down to the bottom, we're going to make our way north. Um, just kind of straight through here. You can almost follow the road. And, you know, I'm not I'm not necessarily grabbing these gray sites, but you can certainly grab these gray sites as kind of mini checkpoints, especially if you're newer you can just grab the grab the various checkpoints as you as you see them the grabbing the extra graces aren't going to hurt you and in fact it's a good way to kind of learn the path even if you happen to die as you're going through so we're going to um, favor the um, the eastern side of this ruins and kind of just go along the edge and once we get past the section that has like guards in it, we're gonna go over here where there's the ruin that has this one dog here. And this item that is located in the corner here is uh, five mushrooms, which are gonna be useful for those potions that I was talking about earlier. We're gonna run over here and grab this warp point in these uh, the ruin section that's just to the east of that dog. So this is gonna take us to the school of Rhea Lucaria, which is, uh, Probably where uh, somebody would, most people would consider this the second boss of the game. Um, but as you can see, we haven't even fought an enemy yet. We, <laughs> we haven't even gotten to the point where we have fought an enemy. So we're going to make our way around here. Uh, the way that I kind of no notice where I need to go here is on the side, there are essentially this tall tree and this small tree. So I'm going to go and jump off the edge of this small tree and tall tree onto this rock. And that will give me enough height to where I don't die from falling damage. So I will go ahead, run across these rocks. Um, there are, there's a somber smith or a smithing stone too that you can get there if you want to upgrade your katana a little bit more. But I don't find it to be particularly necessary. And we're just going to kind of head northwest. Um, going along the edge of the lake here. Now, um, the end goal here is we are going to uh, we are going to steal a key from a dragon's horde. In fact, we are going to go a little roguish here. And right here um, is a dragon, and right behind him is a key to open up that uh, open up the school gate. So, uh, if you go kind of off to the side here usually you can avoid aggroing the dragon and it will let you open up your map and teleport oh. <laughs> buttons how do they work uh, it will let you teleport back to the school after you pick up the key easy peasy right so uh, another thing to do here is uh, um, this is where we kind of this is our point where we can double check stuff because we need to make sure that everything is kind of set up the way that we need it to be set up at this point. Um, so we're going to go ahead and trigger um, access to the round table. Hole. Once you me. get a certain way past I the starter to to area or here. you it battle a certain tall, number of bosses, uh, your finger maiden will together. offer to take you to the, the round Very table, well. hole, which you do actually want to go to the round table hole. 
Um, because you want to be able to use some of your upgrade materials to upgrade your sword. Um, we're not going to make use of this sword for very long, but it is pretty important that we get our sword upgraded. So we're going to go over to our blacksmith friend. You're new from the light loud, you're... And we are going to strengthen our sword. We need to grab a... And we can upgrade it again. I guess we can go ahead, since we have the material for it anyways, um, we'll go ahead and upgrade it to there. Um, so for Ashes of War, uh, we want to take that short sword that we purchased earlier, and we want to take the Ashes of War Golden Vow and equip it to our sword. Now, we don't really care uh, about the... We don't really care about the sword from the perspective of what damage it does or anything like that. Uh, we just want Golden Vow, because Golden Vow is a pretty powerful buff that you can get. Now we're going to go to a gray site, and we're going to add some flask charges. Uh, we have the ability to get a couple different flash charges, and we have a, a couple different healing boosts that we want to make sure we get done. And then in our Wondrous Physics, we're going to want to make sure that we equip the Strength Knot tier that gives us a little bit of a boost to strength, and the Spike Crack tier, which gives us a little bit of boost to charge attacks, that charged R2 that I was talking about earlier. Um, on our equipment, we want to make sure that we have the Radigan Sore Seal. It's a little bit better than the charge attack uh, rune that we can get. And I personally like putting my uh, Wondrous Flask over here on this button, the... Uh, uh, y plus uh, right, although it won't let me drink it in here. Once I have that set up, we are back to the Salvaria Lucaria gate, and we are... Oh, I almost forgot one more thing. Uh, so it, it is important that we uh, brew those sleeping potions. So we go to item crafting, sleeping pot, go ahead and make as many sleeping pots as we can. We have enough material to make another nine more of these, which is kind of the critical mass part for that for this particular um you know run style um unfortunately the the this strategy for going through here and getting this weapon early does require um one pretty precise resource consuming fight um in order to get the weapon that we want so you know, don't necessarily get discouraged if uh, if you try to do this route and you get kind of stuck on this fight. Mastering this fight, especially this early with these resources, is um, just something that you're going to have to practice. It's it's not as hard as it sounds. It just it's very intimidating um, at first glance. So we're going to be making our way through the school. Um, there's another Trina's Lily here that you can grab just off to the left here. And then there's a buff to your weapon that you can get a magic um, a magic grease over here if you, if you want it. Um, both of these are useful if you find that you aren't doing enough damage. Or I, not both of them, just the magic grease. But we're going to make our way through here, uh, trying not to die to um, stupid wizards and their magic. Don't really need to, but we're going to do it anyways. And we're going to run around here and grab this grace. I will probably die here because it's pretty common with all these guys to, to die after obtaining this grace, but who knows? Maybe I'll live. Hey, look at that. I was lucky. I'm going to go ahead and heal up to full because what I'm going to be trying to do will utilize full HP. I just want to kind of run through here, run through the graveyard. We're making our way towards this bridge. And uh, we're going to be making our way through this kind of section that has a bunch of zombies that are trying to get us. There's an archer, there's some dogs. We just kind of want to zigzag a little bit as we're running through the section and make our way towards the right here to jump off this cliff. So this armor set that is located right here happens to be a very, very strong and pretty lightweight armor set. And while this isn't necessarily the easiest way to go if you are uh, not speedrunning the game, this is the way that I typically go. So you can utilize a uh, sort of like a glitch here. Um, it's not really a glitch per se, but uh, if you jump onto that corner there, it does allow you to not take falling damage. 
or take reduced falling damage. And we're making our way down here um, on this on this little lift. Now there there is a much or there is a straighter way that you can also just run through, but I like doing that jump because it's fun. So you're gonna block this guy, but you're gonna let him eat you. So you might ask, why are we intentionally dying to this thing? What does that do? Well. While it is not particularly obvious, uh, dying to this enemy actually is a trap, which there are several things that are traps that take you to areas that you wouldn't normally, uh, you wouldn't normally go to. So we are trapped in this lava area until we escape. Um, so we're going to make a little dive off of this cliff. We're gonna do some tumbly action to heal. A little tumbly. And then we're going to run across here. So we're going to make our way to the right. And the goal here is we're trying to pick up a couple different upgrade items uh, as we kind of run through here. So the, the first upgrade item, we just kind of walk around this house, make your way to the top here. And we want to grab this somber stone that's right here. Perfect. We're going to make our way to the edge here and jump off here. Heal up to full, and uh, we're going to kind of pray for good RNG with this guy over here. Um, it looks like we were wonderfully lucky. Make our way to this. Hopefully he doesn't hit us. Blocking is OP. We're going to make our way up. We're going to make our way to the other side of this little chasm here, and we're going to pick up another somber upgrade stone, uh, which will come into play a little bit later. So, um, so there's a boss arena that's just up there, um, and it's going to be requiring a few very specific things um, to happen. So I'll try to explain it as much as I possibly can, um, but essentially we are going to utilize our buff um, the golden vow buff from our uh, weapon that we put the our, our short sword that we put the buff on we're going to be making use of our uh, flask our elixir flask um, to get ourselves some additional strength and some additional damage on charge attacks and uh, yeah uh, we're going to be making use of sleeping potions which that is a thing I should probably equip onto here um, we're Everything here is pretty tight resource-wise, um, so um, it it I, I will kind of go through exactly what needs to happen as, as I'm kind of doing the buffs here. So you want to avoid getting hit by that guy. And the first time you run through here, there is not a boss fog, so you can kind of run in here, and that guy will not follow you. So I like to use this kind of like area here as my as my. Um, See, he won't he won't really come in um, I like to use this like blood stain here as my as my mark of of where I want to stand so I am going to buff with my buff with my flask then I'm going to buff with my ability switch to my two-handed katana and I'm gonna put my head kind of like right here where this chain is blocking like right where the chandelier lines up and throw a sleeping pot and that should have it land right where it needs to land. Um, and we're going to be doing some some pretty precise combat with this uh, this guy here to stun lock him through the entire fight. So um, let me go ahead and just start all of that and wish me luck. As soon as we throw that, we can start running. And unfortunately, it looks like he... Uh, Unfortunately, it looks like that. So, and as you can see, even a person that has done it a bunch of times can easily have issues with doing it. So, which, um, as far as consumable resources go, that's the only item that really matters in this entire thing is making sure that you have sleeping potions. So, make sure I'm topped off the full. Pass this guy again.
right. Sick. it up again. So he is a lot easier if you decide to kill the dragon um, that I had mentioned earlier. You just do a lot more damage, um, and it's a lot easier to get the cycles down. But I can make another video that like specifically entails the details of fighting him and what exactly you need to do here. But essentially the idea is that you are trying to utilize a sleeping potion to put him to sleep. Then you're trying to uh, build up as much uh, bleed as you can with your sword by hitting him uh, six times while he is there. Um, then you want to use your unsheath to do additional damage um, to stagger him. And um, by staggering him, you have him fall down. You then are um, chaining sleeping potions to keep him asleep while that's going on. And, uh, yeah, you should do about all the damage that you need to do. Um, so for here, we don't really need stats for anything uh, specifically. So this is a good time to kind of get your strength up to or your vigor up to a level where you aren't going to die to one hit on anything on everything. Um, but also at the same time, you want to keep about 25 to 30,000 souls. Um, souls. <laughs> Runes, I guess. So you can buy some upgrade materials later on. So we're going to make our way a little bit farther here. Hey, little cherry kitty. Three, three watch streak? Hell yeah. How am I doing? I'm doing great. Going through and, and, and doing this nice little, nice little route explanation. So I like to go down here if I'm not in a particular rush and grab this rune because it gives me a little padding on uh, on my rune count. Um, it's a pretty pretty sizable rune. I'm gonna go through here. We're just kind of like <laughs> running past these guys, and the goal here is mostly just don't die. I know that's like a uh, kind of like a meme, but really we just don't want to die. So this time we are going to not die, to, or try not to die to this big old lady here. And so as it kind of tosses, you just want to kind of dodge or roll around and make your way through this. Now, that thing can actually shoot its axe through the fucking wall. So <laughs> uh, pretty annoying. Um, go through here, up here, and around here, and we're almost home free. So uh, we're going to make our way to the right here, and hopefully this guy does not get us with anything and jump over the ledge here. And we're going to dodge roll through this guy. And we're just going to make our way through this door. All right. So we're almost to where we get our weapon. We're very, very close. All we have to do is run up here. Now, um, it is... It is very possible that these enemies aggro onto you. Uh, you just want to make sure that you are respecting of them and you make your way through this door. Hit this right here and travel to another location. It's very important you do it pretty quickly because if you don't, um, they will they will nab you there. I'm going to hit this side of grace. We're going to go in here and we are going to go through the boss fog. Now this is the Rikard boss fight. Now, we're not going to fight Rikard immediately. We, we just want the spear that's in here. Now, the spear that's in here is a unique item because it has something that no other item in the game has, and that is absolutely no attribute requirements. So any character of any level of any stat build can actually use this weapon. 
why? Because you sort of need to use this weapon to beat this boss. It's a specifically a weapon that you're supposed to use in this boss fight. However, it's actually a pretty decent weapon all around for a bunch of different reasons. It also has B strength scaling, which is pretty hot in my opinion. So we're gonna go ahead and equip that and actually equip it in my first slot here. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and uh, leave the boss arena. Uh, we're gonna make our way back to the South of Ray Lucaria Gate. Surprisingly good weapon. I know, right? Um, and honestly, you don't have to use this weapon in particular. This is just one of those weapons that is very easy to obtain. Um, well, I guess not very easy to obtain, but you've got to kind of go here anyways. So I'm going to do that same jump where I go down the trees and run down here, except we're going to go in the opposite direction. We're going to go under the bridge and kind of head over in this general direction, kind of northeast. Now, our goal here is another warp gate. That little, uh, that little bodega? I don't know what you want to call it, but that little thing over there has a warp portal in it, and that's going to take us to the next spot that we need to get to, which is uh, right outside of Carrion Manor, and there's a nice, nice giant blacksmith named EG that is going to help us out with some upgrade material and upgrading our weapon. Um, now... In conjunction with the somber five and the somber six that we had that we got when we were at uh, uh, in Volcano Manor, we are going to make our way through here. And you go well. You have a somber five and a somber six, but how do you get somber one, two, three, and four? You didn't grab any of those anywhere. Well, thankfully, EG is going to come to our rescue. And for the my and for the uh, the the might sum of a few thousand runes, he is going to more than happily. Uh, give us exactly what we need to upgrade this weapon. So we can go ahead and purchase one of each of these somber stones, and then we can go ahead and upgrade our weapon all the way from level one to level six. Easy. Go ahead and grab this grace here. So I just want to make sure that I'm healed up and everything. We're going to go up here to Audience Pathway. And we're going to go battle Rykard. Now, Rykard is, uh, can be a challenging boss. Uh, but we have an upgraded weapon. And we have some pretty good strats for fighting him as well. So uh, we are going to make util uh, use of our... Um, we are going to make use of our uh, Golden Vow. We're going to make use of our Flask. And uh, we're going to make use of uh, something that spear weapons have. So if you're blocking and you use the R1 attack with your spear, um, it's a pretty uh, it's a pretty fast, pretty strong attack that you can repeat over and over and over again. Um, and that is what we're going to utilize and abuse to uh, do a lot of damage to Rykard very, very quickly. So we're going to go ahead, run up here, Pop our flask, pop our golden bow. So that's that is the one ability he can do that's really annoying. It does a lot of damage, but thankfully we survived it. And we pretty much just want to lay into our right card as much as possible here. He's going to stagger eventually here. And we just keep attacking him with the spear. We go ahead and regen off our stamina. But as you can see, we're doing an actual ton of damage to him. And he really can't do anything. So we're going to go ahead. Golden Vow up again. Pop our heal. And go ahead and equip our weapon in two hands. I did mess up and I did not give give myself the uh,
And that's right, card. Pretty easy. Um, what I was doing at the end there is something that I actually just discovered recently. And it's that once Rikard starts doing his like ultimate attack in his second phase, where he's bringing, where everything kind of turns red and he starts raining down fire and a bunch of stuff, um, the R two attack, the the special that you have, you can actually do it just one time, and it will break him out of doing that ability. And you can go essentially L two for the special, and then hit with one jab from R one, and then R two for the special and then one jab with L1 again, and you just kind of repeat that until he dies, so long as you have magic. Um, and for our troubles, Rykard gives us a ton of runes. We actually have 133,000 runes. So in addition to that, we're gonna go ahead and utilize uh, Rykard's Remembrance, because uh, we're not gonna go and buy anything, so might as well give ourselves a bunch of stats, right? Um, and, uh, and for the most part, we're just going to level up. I like going to 24 Vigor. That's kind of like my my comfy amount. And then after that, I just like pumping all the rest into strength. There isn't really any other stats that I really care about or need. So I'm just going just gonna to do that. At this point, we don't need our shield. And we can. Uh, I think we can swap out to the Carrion Knight armor because now we should, uh, we should have... Oh, we're still a little heavy. That's fine. Right. I will go ahead and equip the Radigan Sword, Sword Seal, which will give us plenty of, of stats to do what we need to do. Okie dokie. So, going back, now we're going to go kill that, that famously hard boss, Margit. Um, the one that put so many people in their place. We're going to go back and, and kill him now. So we're going to make our way up the road here. And this fight should be pretty trivial, comparatively speaking, to the other two fights that we just did. Um, between Rykard being, you know, very endgame boss, but also kind of like a tricky boss, because you're you're utilizing a special weapon uh, to beat him. Uh, it, the the god skin, um, in order to get to him, is, is somewhat of a challenging fight. But this is pretty much the setup that we're going to be using for the rest of the run. And just in case, we're going to go ahead and grab this grace. I would recommend it just if you're casually playing to grab grab the graces by the boss fights. But, you know, do, do what you will. So I'm going to go ahead and use my buffs, which... Uh, probably a bit of overkill for this particular boss, but... I don't know why I'm trying to do charge attacks or whatever. Nothing fancy required, we just stab him a few times. That's gonna reward us with our with a talisman pouch, which very, very powerful. Getting extra talisman pouches, very strong. So much damage per hit. That's the that's what I'm talking about. That's the whole purpose of a lot of the speedrun routes is trying to get a weapon that's just very strong very quickly. So um, what are we about? Even slowing about an hour into this playthrough here, and we have a very, very strong endgame capable weapon. you breach the and of course, I've been explaining some stuff, so you know, it is what it is. So we're going to talk to this guy, and we're going to get him to open up the main gate for us. He says you want to run through the castle, but see, the thing is, is that if you run through the castle, that's way slower. Uh, that's way slower than them just opening up the gates for you. Uh, so we're just going to run through this gauntlet perfectly first time. Uh, so block, and then uh, you can kind of dodge when uh, when they're shooting at you. Make your way towards the side here. Once the first volley kind of like goes by, you should be able to run past them pretty easily. And we're going to make our way around the edge here. So we're just kind of making our way through, through here, running past all the dudes. So very important. As soon as you get up to the top of these stairs, you're going to immediately roll. Uh, because otherwise you get hit by exploding bolts. 
very bad. You just want to make sure that that guy doesn't get you with a flamethrower, and we're pretty much home free. Go ahead and pop off here just to make sure I don't get randomly got by anything, but we run up this tree, jump over this, and uh, yeah, make our way up to um, our next boss. Grab this if you want to. It's not even an item that's real, though. We're just kind of making our way through, through running past all the enemies. You're going to need to tumble through here. Um, one of the thing, there's two items that we kind of want to grab that are useful. One is this golden seed is just nice to have. Uh, second is this Trina's Lily, also something that is nice to have. Um, but uh, both are unnecessary as long as you, you know, have some from earlier. We're still, we're still pretty strong. Our, our armor is pretty strong. And we have a lot of levels that give us passive strength. But dropping here, grabbing this side of Grace just makes it really easy to, um, uh, really easy to deal with this boss. Um, I do like running over here. I'm going to go ahead and do this now just for kind of like safety later on. Uh, but one thing that's really nice to have is more po potion pots. Um, so they're collectible items that replenish themselves like when you use them. So there's a cracked pot here and then there's a cracked pot. Here. And grabbing both of these cracked pots just gives you a little bit more leeway when you a little bit farther down the run. Uh, when we're fighting Godskin Duo, you just have a couple extra... Um, you just have a couple extra potions to utilize. So once again, we're going to walk through this gate, and we have a boss fight, big dra dragon head man, right? So we're going to go ahead and flask up. We're going to go ahead and cast our golden order buff, and go ahead and equip up to two hand here. So... I utilize a lot of charge R2s in my, uh, in my play because one, they do a lot of damage, a lot, a lot of damage. And once you get him to phase two, you can kind of run directly at him and get underneath of uh, his uh, stupid arm. And that's, uh, that's Godric pretty easy and the reason this is doing so much damage is because of our talisman uh, that does extra damage from charged R2s and our flask also has uh, an item in it that is giving us a bonus to our charged R2 damage plus our considerable amount of strength that we have now 52 um, we're getting strength and a half on all of our attacks because we're wielding the weapon two-handed. You can see our physical damage is 469. Uh, pretty, pretty strong. So uh, now we can kind of go and pop this remembrance as well. Um, we're pretty much going to pop all the remembrances as we get them because we don't really need anything but damage at this point. We're pretty, pretty strong. Um, we have survivability. We just want to do as much damage as possible. So and level up strength a little bit more. And now we make our way back up to EG. So now that we've killed two rune bearers, uh, we can make our way into the capital. Um, we're going to do this by uh, going up the lift of Dectus because it's pretty pretty easy to get there. Uh, we're going to uh, start with, the, with that, uh, that waypoint right there by EG. We're just going to kind of follow the edge of this cliff right past Carrion Manor, avoiding getting blasted by all these magical projectiles. Um, this is something of note here just for the casual playthroughers, but you can get here without fighting any enemies and get one of the most powerful Ashes of War really early in the game. So if you make your way over here, this particular invisible creature that's running through here, if you manage to kill this invisible creature here, it will drop Horfrost on, which is a very, very powerful uh, Ash of War that allow uh, one, the active is very strong. It puts ice on the ground, which builds up frost and hits multiple times on enemies, uh, but also lets you put frost on weapons. So if you have a weapon that attacks at even a, 
a modest amount of speed. It gives you um, gives you frost buildup, which can do percent HP damage, and anything that's frosted um, has uh, um, additional damage. I think it's twenty percent extra damage. As we uh, hit this church, we want to make sure that we grab the tier here just for additional healing, and then we want to make sure that we kind of stay back a little bit. I try to use these uh, these kind of like markers in that soldier as um, as a I don't want to get closer than that sort of thing. Um, and I want to kind of go up this hill uh, past all of this stupid siege equipment. Uh, once you get going up through here, there's a little dip. You can kind of go down here and make your way around the back end of these battlements and along the edge here. No need to fight any of these stupid, stupid soldiers uh, that are blocking our way. We have much more important business to attend to. Now, there are some archers that are guarding this way, if I recall. Um, it should be pretty easy to run past them. You just kind of have to... Or actually, there's no archers at all. That is later on. I apologize. Um, but we are just making our way to the Lift of Dectus. Now, I might, re I might suggest grabbing this... Uh, that grace there, um, just in case you die, uh, because there is not a grace at the top of the Lift of Dectus. But since we grab those two medallions, this will let us ascend on the Lift of Dectus up. The lift is oddly void of enemies. Yeah, no enemies on the lift, just around the lift, guarding access to the lift. And uh, guarding access to the lift on the top too are two giant uh, Gullum Sentinels. Anyways, we are going to be making uh, making a run through here. We're going to be making our way um, into the capital. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is head over towards this big old gate here. We're going to try and avoid fighting as much as possible, um, and we're going to avoid the double boss fight that is right here. But that should not be too big of a problem. I don't suggest going right straight through the um, the initial area right there. If you go, if you go through the just the front there, there's those big ballista guys. You can kind of see up on the up on the top, um, and they're really annoying. You definitely don't want to mess around with those guys. So if you run kind of to the side here, there is a place where kind of the side terrain matches up with the, the castle terrain, and you can kind of sneak in here past any of that stuff. Now, here you kind of want to dash through and past these archers. As long as you stay sort of in the middle and you just keep on moving, the archers usually miss with all their attacks. Even if they hit, you're far enough away that you can usually make quite the speedy getaway. Now, these guys... I'm not going to lie. They suck to double fight. They're very strong, but thankfully they like to showboat as they run towards you, and you can easily just run right past them. So while grabbing this grace is not necessary, I'm going to go ahead and grab it for the, the, sake, of, um, the sake of safety. Um, but you can... Oh, I didn't want to sit there. Unfortunately. That's fine. Um, we want to grab these golden seeds. There's two golden seeds right here. And as we follow this path, there's going to be two more golden seeds. Um, as we run up here, there's going to be a gargoyle that kind of falls from the sky. We're going to ignore that, too. Uh, it's kind of a running theme. If you don't have a remembrance, if you don't have a rune that I need to get from you, we're not going to we're not gonna be killing you. Uh, you have to be pretty important to uh, uh, be worthy of me killing you um, in, the, in this particular playthrough. So we're going to go right here and grab this these golden seeds here and now we have a, a few golden seeds that we'll get to use um, now there is a fun encounter that's in this area uh, there is like a normal dude that's standing around if you encounter him uh, he should turn into a copy of Margit or Morgoth and you should be able to do a second Morgoth fight if you want to which is kind of random and kind of cool um, definitely unexpected on my first playthrough um, going up this mountainside, uh, we're making our way towards a frustrating night, which, uh, there is a, uh, there is kind of like a cheese to beat him, but I'm, don't think I'm going to utilize the cheese. 
Um, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit technical utilizing a sleeping potion to get like a second extra stagger time on, on like an attack. And honestly, I just rather beat it. Um, we're gonna make our way kind of to the left here. Um, there are three golem archers, and you just kind of don't want to piss any of them off. Now, as I said, there are three golem guys, and you don't want to piss any of them off. And uh, horizontal arcs are your friend. Whenever anything is shooting at you with a ranged attack, uh, moving along its horizontal arc is always going to be your friend. All right. So that is the that is the goal right there. This guy, unfortunately, is going to continue to try and murder us. So, so I'm going to explain what's going on with this guy. So I'm going to heal all the way up, and I'm just going to buff utilizing my golden vow and utilizing my potion to end my weapon, mount on Tori, and we're going to run up and see what we can do as far as hurting this guy. But well, most of his most of his attacks are pretty pretty telegraphed, um, such as like him raising his shield in the air. Uh, you know that he's going to be doing his lightning bolt when he pulls his shield down. You know the lightning bolt is going to strike. That's when you dodge. Most of the fireballs that he shoots, you're going to be able to dodge immediately. And his other attacks are relatively slow um, and telegraphed. They just deal a lot of damage. And he's really supposed to be like the gatekeeper here, right? He's he's protecting the protecting the door to the main city. We got him, but he got me with Lightning Bolt. I say it's a pretty fair trade. Pretty tanky, do a good decent amount of damage. There's a lot of synergy in the build and, and what you're kind of doing. And so now you can you can make your way into the city if you want to. Um, I like to go ahead and sit at this grace to do my uh, flask leveling up, which you want to add charges to your flask. You want to go ahead and make use of the, um, the tier that you grabbed. And, oh, I almost forgot. And you want to level up. Um, you just pr pretty much just want to spend out your runes every time you have the ability to. Because that way, if you die, you don't really have to worry about dying. We're going to make our way into the city here. Y2 Sky, welcome on in, friend. We're going to make our way into the city here. Take this lift up. And we're going to make our way to the sewers. Well, we're going to make our way towards the central portion of the city. And specifically, we are going to make our way through the sewers so that we can grab... Um, the missing upgrade component that we have. We have uh, a somber uh, seven, oh, I'm sorry, we have a somber eight and a somber nine, but we don't have a somber seven yet. So we're gonna go ahead and get that in our inventory ready to use. And there's pretty much no other way to go through here. We're just make our way. And so uh, this city is rather vertical and there's a lot of different ways to abuse the verticality here um, and I will show you right now one of the ways that you can do so um, 
You'll notice that there are a bunch of enemies here on various tiers of things. You can kind of utilize like running off of ledges and jumping off things here to uh, make sure that only a certain number of them are really uh, able to follow you. You can also avoid using lifts by, you know, running on top of rooftops um, so that you don't have to, you don't have to utilize the, you know, the traditional pathway. But you do want to avoid these enemies. They're pretty strong. Um, they're rather annoying, and there are a lot of them. You can grab this. I believe this is a... Oh, that's a gold firefly. That's different. You want to make sure you avoid getting killed by that guy. Uh, he should get an attack off, but you can usually avoid getting hit by him by just being diligent. He is very slow, very telegraphed. Oh, I forgot. Sitting at this grace will make it so that she has a whole conversation about how she is. Uh, we have accomplished our objective about bringing her to the Earth Tree. Um, if you don't sit and rest at any of the graces here, she doesn't appear, and uh, it just saves some time if you don't have if you don't have her appearing. Now, as soon as we go through this gate here, we're gonna make our way over and onto some rooftops, and um, we are going to make our way to a well that is located just around the corner here. Now, there are some nasty enemies in that area, so you want to make sure that you get down and into the well as soon as you can. Um, and I like picking up that rune arc just because having the rune arcs are nice if you think you need a little bit more umph in order to defeat bosses and stuff. Like, you could go and you could, you could go get the Godric rune, which is equivalent to, like, 40 levels of stats. Um... Or you could, uh, you could, well, the Godric Rune is probably the easiest one to activate, but if you wanted to, you could activate Rykard's Rune or, you know, any, uh, th those are the two that I collect here. But, you know, if you wanted to, you could go fight Radon or you could go fight Renala. Um, you could go, you know, you could go fight any of the, any of the guys that you want to, but Godric's Rune is really, really intensely strong. Um, and pretty easy to get the Rune. Uh, activated. So we want to get this uh, this waypoint here. This is the underground something or another. Make our way down to this ladder. Make our way down here. So uh, there are some nasty guys in these area. Those little guys there. We're pretty much just going to avoid all of them, and we're going to focus on dealing with uh, this naps nasty lobster man. So. I don't care if I die. My goal is I want that item that is right there. Nothing else matters. Survive. And now that I have this uh, this uh, smithing stone, uh, nothing else really matters. Now we can make our way around here. There are some other items that are cool for like a, a full run. Like for example, if you want to make your way back here to the back, and you think and you think you can manage to survive to grab this item. Moog Shackle is really useful on other. Oh. Moog Shackle is really useful on other sections, uh, specifically both of the Moog bosses. But, but yeah, um, if you find yourself in combat, you can always sit on a grace to remove yourself from combat. But that, that's pretty much that. Uh, so we want to go back to Avenue Balcony. That's pretty much the central location here. And um, from here, we're going to uh, pretty much go all the way up to killing Morgoth. We're going to go back the same way that we had gone before through this gate, but we're going to make a right. And we can sort of walk along with this guy. Wait for him to turn the corner so that he doesn't really chase us. And run through here. Um... We're going to make our way up this dragon, uh, being sure to not get shot at by the archer. Um, we don't really need to listen for him. He usually will uh, try and, like, duck down that, like, side path uh, that the other knight walked through. Uh, but we just want to make it up here. And boom. Easy peasy. Grab this rune arc because it's right here. Most of the items that we're going to pick up that are like erroneous items to pick up or just items that happen to be on the path that we're trying to go. 
that are arguably helpful. So I like to stealth kill this guy, not because there's any particular reason to, it's just might as well. Sometimes he can chase you, I prefer not. And then there's a nice gentleman that comes over here to try and stab you. A uh, couple of R1s to take care of him. And we are at this Gracie. So this little area right here, we're gonna pick up two items that I personally find to be uh, important when I play uh, to give myself a little bit more leeway. I like grabbing this seed because it gives me access to more healing. Though that golem or that big gargoyle can be particularly deadly. So you kind of want to listen, listen to him. He has some ranged attacks that he can shoot at you. So you kind of just want to wait and dodge. Um, and we're going to go through and sneak past these gladiators up here. So you can kill these laterators if you want. Um, uh, essentially, if you want to, you can kind of stealth over here. And this gladiator should walk past you without doing anything. If you are stealthed and sneaky-like. And you just sneak up behind him. Give him the old one-two. That's enough for a stagger. Backstab. Go ahead and charge up another one. And another one. Now, the second one, you don't really need to do that. You can kind of run past him, but I figure since he's distracted already, easy enough to just come up here and take him out. All right, and so there is the ritual shield talisman, which I don't have a rune, I don't have a talisman slot for it yet, um, but the Ritual Shield Talisman makes it so that while you're at full HP, you take less damage. Your, uh, your defenses are increased. Now, why, uh, why would that matter? Uh, if you're already at full HP, why would you want your defenses to be increased? Well, there are a lot of enemies that do a staggering amount of damage. And uh, while it would be really nice to get up to 40 bigger and... Oh, uh, while it would be really nice to get up to 40 bigger and uh, be able to tank most of those things, uh, I don't really want to spend my stat points on vigor um, or vitality. I forget if it's vigor or vitality. Vigor. vigor. I don't want to spend my points on vigor. So instead, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take one of my talisman slots and utilize the, the shield talisman, and it will let me pretty much survive anything that anybody can throw at me. Jules, I'll grab you that hydrate in just a second here as soon as I kick this boss's butt. So, there's a boss in here. We're going to go ahead and take our upgrade, or our, um, our, our buffs. So this boss is pretty much designed to teach you that you need to learn how to jump and attack at the same time. Uh, this boss doesn't have a particularly high amount of HP, but... But this guy is good practice for... for later. This guy is good practice for later. I'm going to go ahead, now that I have this talisman spot, I can now equip my shield talisman. Easy peasy. 
made that look so effortless. Uh, well, there's a reason for that. Uh, you end up fighting that boss later on with more stats and more damage. And so um, uh, let me just say that I have a lot of hours in fighting that boss. Um, but he isn't really that difficult. He's just you have to respect him. Um, you have to respect the number of attacks he does and his range. And um, that is why it's incredibly important to uh, make sure you... Uh, that's why it's incredibly important to make sure you uh, um, you have stamina, you're utilizing jump attacks, all of that stuff. All right. So now we're going to make our way back. Um, so... I, I don't, this isn't necessary. You don't have to go back. Uh, you don't, ha you don't have to go back to round table hold. But if you don't, you miss out on a talisman slot that you have to purchase later. So I like talking to this lady anytime after you get, uh, after you've killed two of the bosses, you can get another talisman pouch. I don't have a fourth talisman to use for this yet, but. All right. So, um, if, uh, so I, you, on the first attempt for this boss, I will buff outside of the fog gate, but if you die, you can pretty safely buff inside the fog gate because you have to run up to the boss after the first attempt. Uh, Morgoth is, is definitely... Um, a barrier boss. Um, he is definitely meant to be a gatekeeper for the end game. So, Like I said, he's definitely meant to be a gatekeeper for the end game. I was a little bit greedy with him there, but um, but essentially, you he's very fast. He has a lot of different weapons that he conjures because he's you know he's Margit, but he's you know the full version, the real version of Margit. He's Morgoth. So uh, I forgot when I went back to Round Table Hold to upgrade my weapon. Um, the whole reason for us going into the sewers to get that somber seven was so that we can upgrade our weapon. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. That should be plenty. Strength alignment. We can go ahead and upgrade seven, eight. Oh, I need 32. Not that one. Perfect. So now we have a level nine weapon. And you don't necessarily have to have the Serpent Hunter Spear. Um, honestly, any somber weapon will do as far as being able to upgrade it very, very quickly. A lot of different combinations of weapons and stuff he can grab. Um, but his fight is actually ra rather scripted. He always kind of does the same sort of stuff um, after a certain point. The, be the hardest part is the beginning. Uh, because at this point, he can kind of just do whatever he likes. So delayed. It's just...
So as soon as you get him into the stagger, um, he's a lot easier to defeat. <laughs> um, and a lot of people kind of miss this on your first attempt with Morgoth is once you kill him, you can actually talk to him. And he has a, a nice bit of dialogue. You can see that he's much less of a monstrosity than he, um, no, you know, in death. But he has some nice bits, uh, bits of wisdom, just pretty much saying that um, even though you've killed him, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the like you'll never get through these barbs that are protecting the inside of the uh, the tree. They're impenetrable. But all the same, you have to check on him. So now that we've done that, um, I will go ahead and grab this Remembrance of the Omen King. And we have to rest here so that we can talk to our finger man. Allow me, you are unable to prevent it. The thorn, a husk, he only went become my pup, so I'd like to the flame and guide. Very lengthy conversation. So, let my share them with me. So I'm gonna go ahead and just dump all of those runes that I had in here. We actually have enough to grab another level if we really want to. So I'm just gonna grab them real fast. All right, so now we're going to warp back to Avenue Balcony. Uh, you'll become very familiar with Avenue Balcony because it's very convenient. So, I'm going to go ahead and drink and buff because uh, we're going to go ahead and take out this big tree guy. We don't have to. He's just a pretty easy fight um, that gives you 50k runes plus. He's a lot easier when he doesn't do that. Of course he's going to do it twice. There we go. Easy peasy. So the Lord rune is 50,000 runes, and then he gives you 10,000 runes for killing him. So, eh, it's not nothing. It's a couple levels of stats. There's a golden rune here. Pretty easy, just like free, free runes. But we're going to make our way over here. So this is a pretty, this is kind of a longer running section. We're going to pretty much be running all the way straight to Fire Giant. We're not going to... Uh, we're not really going to do anything special except for run past all of the enemies all the way to fire. Um, there is one sort of like safety thing that I enjoy picking up because um, it make it just makes sense to me uh, in my brain. Um, there is a talisman that is on the way to fire giant that has uh, that is a fire ta fire resistance talisman, and since fire giant does fire damage, well. A plus B equals C, right? Uh, okay, well, I don't need that anyways. So that item that I was trying to grab that was on the ledge there is another one of the exalted fleshes. Um, and it's not necessary. It's just nice to have because it gives me a little bit of leeway later on. Um, So some people like to do this thing where they jump on the jump on this or like jump here and then they can get up on this ledge that's up here just a little bit faster they don't have to wait for the lift to fully get up but it's very risky because you can just fall off the edge <laughs> the things that people do to save a fraction of a second like that and unfortunately i don't think i can mount up here um, but that's not really necessary. We can just kind of run past all of these guys. We don't need to make we we don't need to fight any of them. 
And especially if you utilize like the terrain, um, and just making sure that your stamina is fully fully up, you can just run past all this stuff. You don't have to worry about them actually getting you. And even as when the horseman gets like really close to you, he just like as you saw there, he gets really close to you, and then he sort of like stops to to stab you with a spear. Um, even though running with the horse uh, has no, uh, there, I mean, there's nothing nothing stopping. You know, there's no reason the horse would stop. Right. Uh, so yeah, take this time to go ahead and equip that fire talisman. And now we make our mad dash to fire giant. I probably should just for safety grab this. I don't usually grab any of these races because it is a pretty safe run to Fire Giant from here. Um, it's it's pretty much just a like a literal straight shot to Fire Giant. So. Just, just kind of head due northeast. And try not to fall where there's, you know, breaks in the in the ground. There's lots of these little like pygmy guys that are here, um, and they're uh, they're very annoying. But you can just run past them. They are not they are not a particular threat if you are just just trying to get through this area. There is a seed you can grab here if you would like, though it is not required. And once you get up to the stairs, these stairs right here, you are attacked by another gargoyle, a black blade. Uh, however, you don't need to fight him. <laughs> you can just run right past him. Um, he will just let you by. Though I would suggest that if you are going to run past the Black Lake Kindred, that you grab this and you sit here for uh, uh, for the reset. Now this lift can be used in two different ways. I believe there's two two different uh, uh, talismans that you can that you can show here uh, if you want to try and get to the Halig Tree. But we're not. We're trying to get to the the giants. Oop. Mount up on our horse, and we're gonna keep on going. Other than the very start when we're collecting a bunch of material that we need this is probably the longest section that is um, you know uh, the longest distance you have to travel before you actually get to another objective it can be um, it can be kind of uh, you know frustrating uh, because you just like keep going through this area and you're like man when is it going to be over when is the next boss fight and uh, it's it's pretty far pretty far but we're just going to make our way through here. Um, there's really no, like, deviation of direction. You pretty much have to go north. Um, there's no other um, There's no other way that you can really go. And, um, you know, make your way through the, the very obvious path um, to where Fire Giant is. Not spending three hours fighting that mounted boss at the beginning? Yeah, not, not three hours fighting that. And not spending three hours staring at Ronnie, you're right. Not doing three hours of either of those things. We're going to be doing hopefully much less than three hours of actually completing the run. So if you dip down here, uh, the ground here will block that archer shot. And so long as you stay mounted, um, you should be able to make your way all the way through here very safely. Now, you can, if you want to, grab the grace that I believe is underneath of here. I'm sorry, the grace is not underneath here, but there is a Trina's Lily. Where is it? It's over here. Oh, right there. Sorry, 
I grab as many Trina's Lilies as I can for, for my runs because uh, every Trina's Lily is a potential sleeping potion, and if I don't have sleeping potions on the um, the bosses that sort of demand them, it is rough. Still making our way north. How you doing tonight, Sheridan? You just chilling? I feel like a lot of people are just chilling tonight. It's Monday, start of the week. Oh, I know your secret. You're playing Baldur's Gate 3. So, I like to grab this grace here, right at the edge of the frozen lake or whatever that's right here, because uh, we're about to do a jumping, um, a jumping uh, task, and um, in, if, if you want to, you can run across the lake, and the lake gets all uh, hazy with snow, and there's a dragon that you... Uh, you fight that's like blocking your way that you've got to fight in the snow, but you know, the dragon is not fire giant. The dragon is is not fire giant. So we're gonna not fight the dragon. Instead, we're gonna come up here and we're gonna make our way to uh, what is seemingly an empty void, but you know, these magicians, they uh, they make ground that, uh, you know, just shouldn't be. God, did I miss? I did. And that's why. <laughs> that's why I, I get the grace, so that I can mess up and, and accidentally jump too early. There we go. So, super easy jump, first try. We're gonna make our way up into the, well, I guess not up, but we're going to make our way south. Um, and our goal is to kind of uh, get to this little base that's over here. Now, we don't have to really do anything inside of the base. We just kind of have to run through it. <coughs> and you can grab that just in case, but I'm going to skip it, and hopefully I don't get punished for it. Though the run through this base is pretty simple if you're not fighting any of these guys. If you are fighting these guys, these big, uh, uh, these big fire priests are uh, kind of intimidating. But we're making our way so that we can cross this chain. And this will, this will take us into a rather morbid area filled with a bunch of dead giants. Now, you could also grab that grace, but there's going to be a grace up here that is just uh, a lot more central to where we're going to need it. Um, and honestly, like uh, if, you're, if you were in a speedrun, you'd skip this grace too, because obviously you're not going to die to Fire Giant or anything like that, right? But for the safety purposes of this run, for teaching and stuff like that, we're going to grab the grace that's up here. We're pretty much running through all of these guys. Once again, just making our way south. And surprise. So right past this giant here is a grace. We're going to take our opportunity to sit down at this grace. Or at least claim the grace. We don't actually have to sit down it. <coughs> and I wish I could say that I have the resources and the skill to uh, one cycle fire giant. I don't. But... I have some pretty good fire giant strats of my own. So, um, you're gonna have to uh, hop off here and buff before you actually get going towards fire giant here because unfortunately you can't buff while you're on your horse and we wanna close this distance as much as possible. Most of his opening attacks can actually be dodged by just jumping off the horse. So that's something that you wanna kinda utilize. 
man. Initial big head of damage there is really nice. For a of reasons. Might die to this. Wait, why am I? that rolling all of a sudden. Okay. No! It was a perfect setup. Um, so by... Hitting him in the hand right there and staggering him, it gives you a perfect shot at his central eye in his chest. And that's kind of the goal. We want to stagger him a few different, uh, a couple times to make it so that the fight just, you know, you're hitting weak spots, you're hitting, uh, hitting for a bunch of stagger damage. Um, it's just unfortunate that the RNG had the fire appear right on top of us there. And Nobody has, uh, nobody struggles with Fire Giant. It's actually kind of embarrassing for Fire Giant, really. Supposedly being an endgame boss and really gives nobody trouble whatsoever. In fact, for as uh, formidable of a foe as he is, I'm, uh, you know, as he's supposed to be, I'm, I'm just surprised that, uh, that they put him, you know, so... I know how to cooperate, sir. See, pretty easy fight. Pretty easy fight. Um, you try and get the stagger. Um, you try and finish him off. You get the stagger on his hand. Uh, you can get a couple of really nice shots in on the eye that does critical damage. Um, you know, and uh, if you want, you can even throw in um, Exalted Flesh into the mix, and that usually is enough to kill him without having to do any of the other things. Like, you don't really have to work hard um, to make anything else happen there. So in light of our stamina issues, uh, I'm going to go ahead and give us a couple levels of endurance um, just so that I can... Um... Oh, I have enough to get a class card. Nice. Oh. What just happened? Oh, my controller disconnected? What? That was weird. 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put us to 18 endurance and then uh, the rest in strength. That should give us uh, enough to where we can... What is going on with my controller here? Weird. Controller legitimately disconnecting. You can even see it on the screen that it's disconnecting. Love it. Good time for it to disconnect. I'm sure we won't have any more controller problems. Uh, but now that we've done with Fire Giant, we're on to Fair Missoula. And uh, uh, Fair Missoula is also a pretty long running section um, for the most part. So this is unfortunately where we say goodbye to our fair, fair uh, finger maiden as she ignites herself for the cause of burning down the protection of the herb tree. Now, uh, in conjunction with weakening the herb tree, we also need the rune of death that is uh, being kept in Ferrum Azul. So unfortunately, we're gonna skip this cutscene because we don't really need to. We don't really need to see her burn. Um, as interesting as that is, uh, I typically prefer to go do the three hand or the three finger route and burn myself instead of burning her and then cure myself with uh, Mikola's needle. But uh, for the the purposes of speed that that is so far out of the way, having to do an additional quest line and fight extra bosses, we're just not going to worry about any of that. Now, I will say that this is a really cool area. Um, dragons flying around, big cyclones everywhere. Uh, the ground itself is broken and floating around. Uh, just a really cool, um, just a really cool sight in general. Um, Fair Missoula pretty much has just a, a straight path to go through, so not really a whole lot of. Uh, not really a whole lot of routing stuff there. Just pretty much making your way um, straight through. And there's some additional graces, but uh, I typically like to run through here and avoid uh, picking up any of the graces or messing around with any of the graces because uh, it's rather deadly. You have dragons that just fly out of nowhere and try and kill you. So, running through here is definitely the, the, the path to victory, so to speak. Though I will say these are some pretty pretty fun optional boss fights, fighting the, the lightning dragons with different movesets um, here uh, is, is just really, really fun. Um, it's also how you get um, the the final upgrade component, or a lot how a lot of people get the final upgrade components. But we're gonna make our way through here, jump over this ledge here, and we're going to run through here. It's just very important that we just keep keep moving uh, because while none of these guys can really kill us by themselves in conjunction with each other, they can be pretty deadly. Um, such as getting hit by a sword and by a uh, and by a lightning bolt. Um, just really awkward, so. Um, get ourselves to full HP. And just make our way through here. Ow. Oh, don't fall. It's very important that you fall with precision here. You don't want to fall, uh, you don't want to fall anywhere you don't want to fall. Because that usually results in, in permit, permanent death. And now for the fight that uh, probably most people um, that have played Elden Ring have complained about. It is a required boss fight, um, and uh, thankfully you can um, you can pretty much uh, you can pretty much cheese it uh, as hard as anybody could cheese a fight. So first things first, we're gonna make our way past these uh, banished knights and just kind of hop over this ledge. Um, we're going to go ahead and walk up here 
and uh, try and okay. Unfortunately, it didn't uh, didn't quite get both of them. But we do want to put both of them to. Perfect. So now that they're both safely slept, we can go ahead and give ourselves the buffs. And you can over damage them, which is really nice. So we're going to do the same thing to this guy. We just want to make sure that we get a little bit of... Uh... So another one will spawn right here, which funnily enough makes it a godskin trio. I timed that a little bit poorly. pretty much keep them perpetually asleep and you don't really have to worry about fighting them at all they are pretty pretty simple the sleeping potions are op against these guys specifically they are very strong um and i think that i think that's very intentional on the part of the developers because they wanted you to utilize all the systems and i mean this item is something that you get right at the beginning of the game like you have the ability to get it right at the start so there's uh, and exploring like right at the beginning area. So there's almost no reason to not get it. Oh, there's another one here. It is in general much safer to just go here, run over to the side, and then you can, you can just take this like very cushy ledge down instead of doing any of the other weird jumpy, jumping stuff that I did. You can come over here. Um, there is a talisman that I like picking up here. And uh, depending on how you feel, you can utilize this talisman or the the shield talisman. But the Dragon Crest shield talisman gives you a ton of defense. Um, so for the most part, I like to substitute the fire resistance one out for the dragon, uh, the dragon talisman. And in combination with the shield talisman, you're just very, very tanky. You can survive a lot of hits. You can survive a lot of secondary hits, um, and it doesn't cost you. Uh, it doesn't cost you on the equipment load by very much. So there's a couple different ways that you can traverse over here. Uh, I'm not quite as familiar with the elevator skip that exists here. So what we're gonna do is just run the bird gauntlet, jumping up over here. Uh, it is very important to note that you don't want to stand on any of the red areas. Um, that is where lightning bolts uh, come, and that is bad in general. Um, these birds are going to chase you to the end of oblivion and back. And uh, birds in Elden Ring are uh, are awful. So. Thankfully, uh, once you get kind of up on this ledge, uh, I'm not going to say it's free. Uh, you do still have to pay attention to what's going on, but uh, the birds are much less likely to follow you. And uh, one thing about Elden Ring is when you're not looking at enemies, they slow down to like 5 FPS. They, they, their models slow down, and it makes them much easier to dodge and, and, and manipulate what they're doing. So by not looking at the dragon, we make it much easier for us to walk past the dragon. Stop. So we just want to make sure we don't get hit by this guy. And now we're on to Malka. Very close to the end of the game. Uh, 
Now, uh, now I'm just going to go fight Malekith. Um, you can kill this knight if you want to. Uh, but on my first attempt, if, if, if I don't die here, I'm, I'm just not going to worry about killing this knight. Um, there is a boss fog, so he has kind of like a wind-up animation where he... He kind of like charges up, he has his weapon get like struck by lightning or whatever. But the first time you enter the combat arena, Malekith has this monologue that he kind of talks at you with. And so, as long as you don't go too deep into the boss arena, he does let you buff. And that's very important. His, like rock attacks are okay to attack into as long as you can get close enough to them. shit. Well, this might be bad. Oh, he didn't do his normal attack. Alright, well, that shows me for thinking I know what's going on. Because he is very aggro to get to you at the start after the first attempt, because he doesn't he doesn't monologue anymore, or at least he is he is usually less apt to monologue. See how he's certainly make use of the pillars and stuff in this boss arena. So now that he's at like almost uh, almost half HP, I'm gonna go ahead and reapply my buff because it only lasts for a certain amount of time. So he usually does that. If you just step back a little bit and then step forward towards him when the when the boss fight start uh, transitions, you can usually hit him 
for two pretty heavy attacks. That should stagger him uh, if his stagger gauge is in the right spot. And then you can hit him for a critical attack, a heavy attack, and then usually a light attack will be enough to finish him off. Um, and that's not the only weapon that you can do that with, but um, it, any 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 time when you get him to like that 50%, as long as you have a decently heavy weapon, you can really jam on the damage. And we're going to go ahead and consume all the units. I think I can mount up here. All right. So now that we've gone and killed Maliketh and set the tree on fire, you can see that the capital city is much worse for wear than it was the last time we were here. And we have a friend by the name of Gideon Offnir, which if I fail the setup for Gideon Offnir, I will feel pretty bad. Uh, Gideon is either the easiest fight in the game or the hardest fight in the game. And it's really not, oh, well, I don't know about the hardest fight in the game, but uh, he is either really easy or really annoying. Um, he is a mage that has access to every spell in the entire game. Um, he has healing flasks and he is very mobile. Um, all the spells do an incredible, incredible amount of damage. Um, and as such, we really don't want to... Uh, we really don't want to deal with that. Um, the thing is, though, is that Gideon has uh, a a uh, a a tendency to talk too much. Yeah, that's a boss fight. Um, it looks it looks really easy when things go the right way, uh, but he is nightmare incarnate when uh, when things don't go the right way. So, I strongly suggest um, trying to trying to get him in a very sneaky and cheap way before he actually gets to the point where he is fighting you. Um, definitely take advantage of that monologue um, after the first attempt. If he manages to kill you. Um, it will be bad for you because uh, he does not monologue again. Um, he does not let you walk into the boss arena and have him, um, you know, regale you with a, the, you know, the story of how he, you know, nobody, no tarnished are supposed to rise to the throne or whatever. It's, <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty brutal. So now that we have dispatched with uh, Gideon, we are on to um, we, we are on to uh, Godfrey the first Elden Lord I don't think I have enough to level up again either way not really necessary so Godfrey the first Elden Lord is an interesting fight we are going to try and do a script for him um, but I usually mess it up and so I'm sure I'm going to have to fight him a few times. Maybe we'll get lucky. But essentially, we are going to fight him. We are going to try and leave him with just enough stagger so that he uh, he enters phase two with some stagger bar to make use of.
Unfortunate. I got trapped on the wall here, but... First try. Um, you can see what, if you get the stagger in the phase in phase two, he goes down pretty easy because you can just kind of like hit him, hit him, hit him, and you just deal a ton of damage really fast. The first fight, the first part of the fight is all about the dance and maintaining um, his posture, like his posture by continuing to hit him over and over again over the course of the fight. If you let his posture break or his posture reset, then you can't really do the that part where you're pushing him into, uh, pushing him into the next like phase with enough to stagger him, but there we go. 80, 80, 80 strength. All right. Uh, Radigan Elden Beast. Uh, this is the final, this is the final battle. Um, there's pretty much not really anything else I have to say about that. Uh, this is a tough fight. It's a tough two-part fight. Um, but thankfully, our weapon uh, is very well equipped to deal with exactly what Radigan is trying to put on us. So.
Oh, fuck you, really? I guess it's fine. Not really the worst move that he could be doing, but... We have the second ring with Elven Stars. Oh, I'm on the edge of the boss arena? Okay. <laughs> Somehow I ended up on the edge of the boss arena. That's ridiculous. So if you get a stagger on him, it's incredibly important to actually follow through on the stagger because you can usually get um, you can usually get a follow-up hit. Of course. Of course. Why would you be easy? Well, that is, uh, that is Elden Beast slain. And more or less to the point, once uh, Elden Beast gets to a certain amount of HP, uh, it does Elden Stars, and it takes a long time for Elden Stars to wi wind up, so it ends up being a really, um, really good spot to, uh, uh, a really good spot to nab that, uh, um, uh, that, like, double charged attack to really get a stagger in or something like that, so... Um, that's that's Elden Ring in probably close to or under three hours with explanations and a ton of deaths and stuff. Um, the where, where I definitely messed up a lot. Um, 
and and I'm super out of practice. But uh, even if you beat Elden Ring, you don't have to continue on to your next playthrough. But uh, I just figured I'd, I'd go here. Two hours, fifty six minutes, fifty eight seconds. We didn't even we didn't even take three hours of gameplay time to do it. We're not even level one hundred. Um, there's a bunch of things that you can do within the build that um, that you can change. Uh, if you don't want to go get the Serpent Hunter, you can use any weapon that levels up using Somber Stones. Preferably something that is a heavy weapon that has strength scaling for this particular build path. These are probably the best talismans for you to get because one, they're on the path that I outlined, but also because they just do a lot. Radigan Sword Seal gives uh, five points to five stat uh, to four stats, uh, vigor, endurance, strength, and dex. Uh, so it's twenty levels of stats um, in one item for the cost of taking a little bit of extra damage. And because you get vigor and endurance as part of the uh, as part of the, the source seal, that lets you wear a heavier piece of armor, equip heavier gear, thusly taking less damage. And it gives you more HP, which means that even though you're taking more damage, you have more HP. It also gives you more stamina. It's a dodge roll. All of the above. Just a very powerful item, especially if you're low level. Now, once you get to 40 Vigor and 40 Endurance, it's not as good of, uh, of an item. Like, once you get into past level 100 gameplay, um, because you... There are other things that do more than what it is, but especially early in the game, this item in particular is incredibly strong. Because, like, right at the beginning of the game, we go pick this up, and it gives us 20 levels of experience, right? So even though we're level 9, we have 20 levels of experience in one talisman that we pick up. Very powerful. Uh, axe Talisman, Enhancing Charge Attacks. Uh, we use a lot of charge attacks in this build. There's a lot of times where we take advantage of the long wind-up time of a lot of enemies. Axe Talisman is just the best way to do about uh, go about that. And in conjunction with our flask using the um, charge attack um, uh, charge attack portion of the, 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 the flask, it really gives you a lot of damage. Um, Ritual Shield Talisman is just in a convenient spot. It lets you survive some of those really, really big attacks that some of the enemies have. And in conjunction with the Dragon Crest Shield Talisman, you just have a lot of survivability, even if you don't have the heaviest armor. So, there you go. That's uh, that's pretty much that's pretty much the game. Um, obviously, there's tons more stuff that you could be doing in here. This is just the the straight to the straight to the end. Um, gameplay and of course beating the final boss gives you 500,000 rune arcs um, and you're totally free to explore the rest of the game there are a few things uh, that you get kind of uh, kind of wrecked on if you don't do before certain points like for example there's all these all these characters that are in here that kind of like die as a result of the uh, this being fi fi 500,000 rune arcs no not rune arcs you get five, 500,000 um, 500,000 runes but anywho, that's Elden Ring. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I hope uh, I hope that uh, anybody that's in YouTube land, if you stuck around for this long, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video.